There are 139 million square miles of open ocean on this planet, and 197 million square miles of land. Today, it's as easy as opening any number of navigation apps on your phone to get where you need to go, taking the quickest and most efficient route available. But what about before the technological boom or even the industrial revolution? How did people find their way? As we begin traveling and exploring the planet, adventurers made crude drawings on woodcuts or even lithographs. Over time, the volumes of roughly drawn maps were cross-referenced, allowing us to put together more complex charts, much like assembling a puzzle. The earliest known map comes from around 600 BC. It was scratched out on clay tablets and was a mere 5 by 3 inches in size. This map depicted the world as a flat surface, a disk surrounded by bodies of water. Since then, there have been many ancient maps of the old world, leading up to our current technological chartings of the planet. While many of these maps are fascinating and have their own oddities, one stands out as a peculiar, the Piri Reis map. The Piri Reis map was created in 1513 and discovered in late 1929 in the Topkapi Palace in Istanbul. What is so bizarre about this map? It contains accurate depictions of the highly detailed, for its time, coastlines of Europe, Africa, and parts of Americas. What adds even more intrigue to this piece of history is its accurate depiction of the continent of Antarctica. According to the National Science Foundation, Antarctica was first spotted by humans in 1820. So how did an entire continent make its way onto a map 300 years before its official discovery? Here's the story. Ottoman admiral and cartographer Piri Reis is credited with assembling the map in question, which depicts what is known as the New World. The Old World refers to the continents of Europe, Asia, and Africa, which were known to ancient civilizations with established human populations, dating back thousands of years. The New World refers to the continents of North and South America, which were unknown to Europeans before the voyages of Christopher Columbus in 1492. The fact that these newly discovered land masses, widely known today, were discovered and accurately charted on the Piri Reis map only 21 years later remains a mystery yet to be solved. To map newly discovered land and water centuries ago, various methods were used. The first and most obvious method was through direct observation. Those who stumbled upon new lands in uncharted waters would recount their findings and outline objects of significance, such as landmarks, coastlines, or major geographical features. Another method was Ptolemaic mapping, which involved using latitude and longitude coordinates to create maps, based on the work of the ancient Greek geographer Ptolemy. Portolan charts, navigational maps, used by sailors in the Mediterranean during the Middle Ages, were also created using a compass and estimated distances. While there are a handful of other ancient methods, most were coupled with deductive reasoning. If point A was discovered and point B was later discovered, it was not difficult to surmise a stretch of coastline between the two points connecting them. Among the many methods of cartography, one of the most efficient approaches was pulling together older source maps to create a larger map and consolidate separated coastlines. These are referred to as lost source maps. Piri Reis was clear in his notes that he drew upon a collection of older charts, some of which he stated dated back to the time of Alexander the Great. This could explain the remarkable accuracy achieved despite the lack of technological advances at the time. If the lost source maps were created over a long period of time, potentially thousands of years, giving the creators ample time to locate and chart in extreme detail, 
then Perry Reyes likely had an amazing collection to choose from. The fact that these reference charts are long lost only makes the Perry's Reyes map more valuable as it is, in itself a collection of ancient history. The bombshell modern-day researchers stumbled upon when studying the map is the unexplainable presence of Antarctica. As I previously mentioned, this continent was not discovered until 1820, and its true nature as an actual continent was not fully known and understood until the late 19th century. Yet here it is, the northern coastline outlined very accurately. Strangely enough, it is depicted without any ice suggesting that the source map this section was drawn from might have come from an ancient civilization that predates the current ice coverage of its continent. It could be explained through deductive reasoning. Perhaps older source maps were charted in this fashion, and coincidentally, a coastline was derived from landmarks of partial coastlines that were known at the time. Personally, I do not believe this theory. The accuracy is too remarkable to simply be a coincidence. Most historians widely ignore alternative history or explanations, which is why the Piri Reyes map is so controversial. Claims that the map doesn't appear to be as accurate as previously thought simply because an explanation has yet to be made. The map's accuracy and the purported ancient sources it drew upon challenge the conventional understanding of history and historic cartography. It may be easier to discredit this unique relic rather than change our perspective. As remarkable as it is, only one third of the map was recovered. We'll never know what other remarkable details may have been included on the original full map. What do you make of this? Have we turned a blind eye to a potentially massive missing ancient history? We've never been in a more advanced stage in human history. But I can't help but feel we're missing major parts of our past as a species. Drop a comment below. I would love to hear your take on this strange piece of history. We'll see you in the next upload.